safest place in Bethnal Green during the Blitz was the partly built tube. It was a real subterranean home from home, deep underground. We were so close to one another in them tunnels that you got to know everybody, you know. All them that is in your area, down the, in, in the bunk beds, so it was only about four foot apart. At one point in 1941, there were over 140,000 people seeking shelter in the tube system during one night. If you heard the sirens, you knew exactly where to go, and everyone had their regular spot. That was where we used to sleep, in the tunnel, and bunk beds either side that went right the way down. I don't think they went up to Marlin, but there was quite a lot down there. It was a, a full community. The other platform, we had a canteen run by a little woman called Alice out of Roman Road here. Uh, we had a church, well, a, a vicar. We had a library. So it was most convenient. Isn't that the tea train coming around? So wake up, Mrs Higgins of Bessemer Green. Tea's up, ducks. Drink it while it's nice and hot. We was on this side, on the right-hand side. It was in alphabetical order, and you had we were C71, 72 and 73. I was on the top bunk and now when I go through the underground, when I see the cables, I used to put my shoes in there. That was one of the things you'd done. I'd say, my dad in the middle and mum at the bottom. We had lights right through the middle of the tunnel, which dimmed down at 11 o'clock, so everybody talked quiet then, so they'd get a night's sleep. And um, the next morning, people packed up their bundle, a lot of them went out again, upstairs but a lot like my mother and loads of others they stayed down here. Next day life would return to normal. By 1943 though above ground the skies were relatively quiet. The Luftwaffe was now busy in Russia but there were still isolated raids designed to keep London on its feet. The stuff that was coming over was like uh, feather dusters compared with the big blitzes that were going on before. So I can't think the East Enders were people liable to panic. The panic they did on the night of March the 3rd, resulting in the loss of 173 lives. Something changed drastically that night. Something new caused the panic. As reports of the massive loss of life began to emerge, speculation about the cause of the disaster blamed the tragedy on a German bomb. Others talked about a series of unfortunate accidents involving a woman and her baby falling down the stairs. But almost immediately the locals suspected that the news coverage of the disaster was being censored on orders from the very top. The true cause of the panic wasn't being reported. Eric Linden, who worked as a tape room boy for the Daily Mail, filed the first full account of the disaster, but his story never saw the light of day. I was kind of quite disappointed that here I had got what was obviously a scoop before I'd even become a reporter. Uh, nothing of what I had written appeared anywhere. It seemed to be that the official line was that there had been a direct hit on the station which is why so many people were killed but uh, certainly I knew that wasn't the case and I'm sure that everybody who lived in the East End knew it as well because the station was still there there wasn't any bomb damage but eventually we came to the conclusion obviously that the original story must have been censored Whitehall did launch an official inquiry just weeks later but the conclusions were deemed too damning to be released to the public. The government ordered the report to be kept under lock and key until after the war. The examining magistrate's report was only released in 1946. Sir Lawrence Dunn was the magistrate who presided over it. And uh, he's, um, uh, in the end, his verdict was that it was uh, sheer panic and accidental death. There w was some criticism of the design of the shelter because as I remember it, it was quite a narrow entrance quite a steep st uh, flight of stone steps and as I said I think it was raining that night so they'd have been wet which didn't add to the safety of everything. The report pinned the blame on faulty design at the entrance to the tube but hidden in the text was a hint of what really caused the disaster. The magistrate mentioned the launch of a salvo of rockets from Victoria Park he also mentioned the locals' imperfect knowledge of these new weapons, a euphemism for the fact that residents were ill-informed about any rockets that might be in the area. The locals had their own ideas. Everyone had the, the view that it was either 
bomb, a new German bomb which came down, but that was discounted because nobody had seen or heard any planes, or it was some new weapon that we'd got which went up. Piecing together the puzzle of what really happened at Bethnal Green tube station that night has taken over 60 years. The clues lie scattered around London's archives and hidden deep within the memory of local residents. The first big clue is in Victoria Park, just under a mile from the tube station. Who and what was here that night? Records confirm that a battery of Home Guard soldiers, part-time civilians, were manning an anti-aircraft unit in the park. Normally, they'd be using conventional ACAC guns, but on the night of the disaster, they were trying out something new. We was young, and Victoria Park was our, our playground, and they were encroaching on our playground, you see. So we used to go and have a look there, see, see we, we can get pretty near to what was happening, and we knew that there was guns of, of a sort, but there wasn't an anti-aircraft gun that we knew would be an anti-aircraft gun, and they was always covered up. But uh, we knew that there was some sort of a rocket. Well, I'm pretty sure that this was the area where these guns, where this battery of guns was. I could be proven wrong, but I'm, I'm almost definite that this is the area that they came from. Well, we could, we could walk around the perimeter, and nobody seemed to stop us. There was no guards. The day's work over, thousands of men in the Home Guard get into uniform. For Britain's civilian soldiers make up a large proportion of the rocket crews. The Home Guard unit operating in the park was nicknamed a Z battery unit because of the new rocket weapons they were using. But could this unit's weapons be the same ones referred to in the Whitehall report? Certainly, everyone recalls an unusual noise coming from Victoria Park that evening. I could hear the, the noise of the rockets, or the bombs as we thought were then. I could hear the shh. Well, it sounded like a shush. We saw like something is shooting up like a firework sort of, a firework display going up, you know. After then you'd heard a, a crump and a whoomp. Uh, you hadn't heard anything go <laughs> or however it went. I joined the Home Guard. We've not been able to track down any of the soldiers in the Home Guard unit in Victoria Park that night, but we have managed to find members of other Z battery units in South London who were also trying out these new anti-aircraft rocket weapons in 1943. I was uh, on Blackheath, uh, where there was 64 ZFX uh, guns, or launchers, whatever you care to call, uh, plus a radar station. I had 10 in my section. I had one, uh, one uh, twin barrel uh, projector and one Lewis gun. And um, during that time, Everybody thought we got secret weapons. Yeah. I suppose it was a secret weapon as far as most people are concerned. Everybody in London, for instance, had heard ack ack throughout the Blitz, but they had never heard a Z battery. This archive from the Imperial War Museum clearly demonstrates the deafening sound that could be produced by a Z battery unit. The missile systems were designed to be launched en masse, 50 or 60 in one go. It was as if all hell had been let loose, belching out flame and, and noise like you've never heard. 128 all going at the same time, all in a fairly close area, and everything that could move on Blackheath, stones, torches, everything else flying through the air from the blast from the rockets completely new noise and everybody else I should think who heard it would be the same as me petrified the battery consisted of 64 rocket guns the, the rockets themselves were about six seven feet long and uh, the business end contained a three inch anti-aircraft shell <laughs> 